My name is Michelle Widener, and I am a commercial interior designer at Bernardo Wills Architects. I think a lot of the stereotypes of interior design is that we uh, pick paint and carpet and we always call it the pillow tossers, you know, you pick a pillow and just doing fabrics, but really it's a lot more involved than that. Uh, we basically take the interior of a space and make them functional and safe for the end users. I think what's interesting about interior design is there's no typical day. There's no typical project. It varies, so that's really exciting. But typically, we start a project with programming and visioning. So we meet with a client, we interview them, we tour spaces um, that are similar or their existing space. And I think the most important part is that we identify problems. And that's a, a big part of interior design is we're problem solvers. We work really closely with architects, mechanical engineers, and structural engineers, electrical engineers, which I think a lot of people don't really think we do. And um, that is also to uh, ensure the health and safety of the people using the space. The great thing about interior design is there's many qualities that make a good interior designer. Uh, obviously, being a problem solver, um, having uh, artistic ability is great. But um, when we talk about being creative, that's also a quality you assume uh, interior designers have. And when you think of creativity, that means art and being, you know, knowing color. But really, creativity just means being able to think outside the box, seeing past what's just in front of you, seeing possibilities. The reason I became an interior designer was because I was, I really loved art and I studied fine arts for a period of time and then I just didn't see how I could make that into an actual career. And then I started trying, uh, taking classes at, you know, at my college and started to realize, oh, let's try interior design. And so I took a class there and it dawned on me that I can take my artistic vision and my artistic uh, passion and try to um, implement that in a 3D environment. And that was really exciting that I could, you know, people could actually experience art in a functional way. To be a commercial interior designer, you do need that four-year degree. And that is mainly because we are we need to understand the technical aspects and the codes and the accessibility requirements of a space, and that's a large amount of what we do. So the main difference between a residential interior designer and a commercial interior designer is the level of education. And then also a commercial interior designer has to uh, work with architects and um, with engineers and really understand life safety and the codes associated with that and um, the uh, accessibility requirements for a space we're dealing with the public so there's a very um, there's a great responsibility to keep the spaces safe and functional for our clients and our end users My most rewarding project that I worked on um, was one we didn't get paid for. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. But uh, it was a project called Fresh Soul, and it's in East Central Spokane. And we worked with a, a variety of different organizations to create this space for uh, an area that was in need of some like hub or community space. And we worked with the art department at Gonzaga. We worked with 
various New America Credit Union and different organizations um, in the East Side Reunion Association uh, to create this space that um, trains students to uh, work in the uh, restaurant industry and trains them to um, get a job outside of, of afterwards. And not only do they do that, but they also tutor the students uh, to help them graduate uh, high school. 